Hey, what's up, y'all? You know it's your girl, Kane Decoded, Miss Vibrations, the hostess with the mostest. Make sure you smash that like button and tell me what you think about this video in the comments. Today, I'm going to review Megan the Stallion in her words, okay? I watched the documentary today. I wanted to get this out. And then, you know, after that, I'm going to head on over to TikTok. So you can always find me on TikTok. Can't go to Street because on TikTok. Make sure you go there. That's where I be at. And um, put it in the chat. Let me know what you think about the documentary. How you feeling? What you rate the documentary? Uh, so let's just get right into it. So in the beginning of the documentary, um, they show you glimpses and pieces. Basically what we saw on the trailer, you know, of her life. She takes us all the way back to... Um, she starts from the year 2000, from when she was a little girl. She talked about how her mom rap, how she remembered being a little girl watching her mother rap, and it just inspired her. She, her mother was thick and curvy, and she just felt like her mother was the baddest in the whole world, and she looked so beautiful. And her mother is who inspired her to start rapping because she said when she would go to school, she would sneak in her mother's room, and her mother would be writing writing songs down. So my partial of this documentary is also in anime. Y'all know Megan loves anime. I didn't know Megan loved anime, but I found out she liked anime per a friend, and now I see it. So half of it is in anime, and then, you know, the most majority of it is in real time with, like, pictures of her, footage of her talking, she shows us her graduating from college, um, which was really cool to see that she graduated from college. She also takes you with her from her mom passing away and stuff like that. So in the beginning, um, her father has been locked up most of her life. But when, they, when he came home, they were very close. She talked about that like she was a daddy's girl. He would tell her about a lot of things. And she would also, um, he said, she used to say, he always would say, Everything that grin ain't your friend. So I do like that because y'all know I'd be having a bunch of sayings. So I like that and that stuff is true. Just like everything that glitter ain't gold, okay? Um, so I did like that. And her father passed away from a heart attack. So when he passed away from a heart attack, she talks about how that just drastically changed her life, her mother's life. They didn't really talk about it much, but that really hurt her. Fast forward, when she was doing all of these videos, when she first started wanting to rap, she said that she showed her mother, because she wanted to impress her mother, she showed her mother a video on YouTube, and her mother was our number one fan, her mother was our cheerleader, and was like, yeah, that's my girl, this is what we're doing, sorry, you hear my dog shaking in the background. Okay. <laughs> and so she was just very excited, her mother was our biggest cheerleader. How she was talking about how her mom recorded all of her videos. Her mother would record the videos of her in the car when she was first rapping, when she first came out. Before she first came out, all of that, we all know how Big Freak put her on the map. Boom, then the rest was history from there. So right in the beginning of her career in 2019, her mother passed away. So she fast forwards and take us from 2000 and we jumped to 2018 and 2019. Her mother passed away. Um, everything like that and just how her life changed. A few weeks, I think it was either like three weeks or maybe like six weeks after her mom passed away is when she got nominated for no for an award. So she takes us with her on that journey when she goes into the club. How her um how she got nominated for the award. She was just super excited. Kelsey's with her throughout this whole entire video. Um, and she acknowledges that Kelsey was her best friend and all of that. So you get to see her and Kelsey bond on camera. Kelsey was also with her when she shot the video for Moneybag Yo, along with her mother as well when she first got like this chain. I don't know who got it for, but she had got a little chain or whatever. And then after that, you know, her and Kelsey, like I said, have a kumbaya moment, just reminiscing about her mother. And she was, and she, you hear Megan talking about how Kelsey's her best friend. Kelsey has been there with her by her side and all that. And you even get to see like the chemistry and the friendship there between her and Kelsey. And Kelsey says, I knew from the moment that I met her and I uploaded that first video of hers on YouTube that I knew she was going to be a star. You know, so it also gives you like that bittersweet moment because of where we are today. Now with the history of the friendship. So Megan goes on, she continues, she says she's partying, she's drinking, she's doing all of these things. She, she, never, she never dealt with the fact that her mother passed away. So in the midst of her not dealing with the fact that her mom passed away, she began drinking and having sex, she said. All she was doing was drinking, having sex, and hanging out with anybody. 
And um, that's how she coped with a lot of it. She said she felt like she had to be strong. She always had to be strong because she didn't even really let her mother see her crying when, after her father passed away. So she said that when her father passed away, that is also when she, you know, developed Megan the Stallion. She said Megan the Stallion protects Megan Pete. So, you know, she, she created an alter ego where she didn't care about what people thought. She didn't care about what people um, what people felt about her. She didn't care what she felt about herself. It's like her alter ego. And that's when she became Megan the Stallion. She also talks about when she was little and she used to get picked on and teased and stuff like that for being so tall. She said her family, her grandmother, they always talked to her, praised her about how beautiful she was. And saying that she should be a model and that she's tall like a model. But she was just still saying that that still bothered her with the children would say about her. And when she would go home crying, like, her mom would tell her, like, come on, you know, we get it together. Don't do all of that. So then after a while, we also get taken on the Tory Lanez adventure. Now, disclaimer for me. I don't know, you know, spoiler alert, maybe that might be. If you are looking for this documentary for her to talk about Bigfoot what's going on with her and Nikki addressing anything, this is definitely not what this documentary is for. This documentary did not give that at all. It just basically lets you let you in on another side of her and see what her journey was like from the beginning. So for me, it was good to learn her story. I'm not a fan and I'm not not a fan. You get what I'm saying? Um, if that makes sense to you, you don't have to because it makes sense to me. So I mean, I've listened to her songs. I like some of her songs. I don't have anything against, you know, Megan Thee Stallion. I just feel like her song doesn't have a lot of replay value for me. And um, I just don't be like, yeah, let's put on some Megan. That's not, I've never been, I've never been that. But I definitely think she makes good songs. I like her mixtape music before she came up. I like all of that stuff, but I'm just not big on Megan Thee Stallion. Outside of that, you know, she shows, you know, how she wanted to always do a song with Beyonce. She got that moment. She also showed clips from Hot Girl Summer. And I was laughing because I'm like, oh, okay. She didn't put any clips of Nicki Minaj in there. She has clips of Beyonce and everybody else, but none of Nicki Minaj, which I get because they kind of not on the same page. But I also know Nicki probably would have been petty. Like, I'm going to sue you or I'm going to hold up the release of this video you're not going to use my face and have me nowhere in your documentary. So I get why it was only um, scenes of her, right, from Hot Girl Summer. And you just watch her evolve. You see Cardi in there. She's, she has the YouTuber. She has Joe Buttons, Academic, uh, Tasha K. Anybody who's ever said anything, like, negative about her on a platform pertaining to the Tory Lane stuff, that's in there, that in there. So I was like, oh my God, check out Tasha K. You know, I thought that that was cool. And she's going through the process of how she doesn't really have anybody. You also see Party in the, in the video. You see the back of him, like the sides of him. You see them walking and stuff like that. He doesn't say anything. You don't really hear her say anything to them. And they talk about her house got robbed. They ask the baby. He's in there. She got clips in there about, um, from, you know, like the, whenever he went on the radio and was talking about, how he slept with her and all of those things. And then she she also sits and she admits that she lied to Gail King and she even shows that clip. And she said, I don't know why I lied, but she said, you know, we were coming here because I got shot. Somebody shot me. So why are you asking me about who I'm sleeping with or who I slept with? And she just said she just didn't like how she was a victim, but all everybody was focused on was her sleeping with Tori. Like, did she sleep with Tori? Did she not sleep with Tori? She's doing interviews about it. And she's like, why is this even a question? And she also said that, you know, a lot of the stuff that happened to her wouldn't have happened if her mother was living. And she didn't know how to deal with it. She didn't, um, and she didn't deal with it. And she said she handled it by having sex and drinking. But we don't always know how to properly deal with things when our heart is broken and we're going through things. So she didn't really do anything any different from what we do every day. Uh, I don't like this though <laughs> about it. What I don't like about it is, and me and my friend was having a conversation about this earlier. If somebody asks you how you doing or how you feeling, or if there's an issue between y'all and they come to you and they ask you about it and you aren't being honest saying, 
well, this is the issue. This is how I feel about it. Or they asking you how you feel and you're like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. And you still drinking, doing whatever you're doing, or you still holding on to whatever the issue may be. It's not fair to them paint a story like nobody was there for you. And, and I, and I get it. Cause me and my friend was like, you know, going back and forth about this, um, earlier and it was pretty cool because it was some interesting, you know, perspectives on it. But, you know, I think that us as people, we need to work on being more communicative. You know, we got to communicate and we need to work on expressing ourselves because you can't ask somebody what's wrong with them or how they feel and they choose to tell you nothing's wrong, that they're okay. And then you want to hold them to some expectation of they should have known that something was wrong with you. I get if this your best friend and you know, you saying she your best friend. I think that their situation actually went and got kind of ugly because I remember Megan getting on, getting on um, live saying that Kelsey was not our best friend. Was never her best friend. She only had one real best friend. And this is this, 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 this. And she showed that. So it is kind of like a lot that's going on. And, you know, from what the things that have transpired that we've seen now over the course of time to, you know, Megan Thee Stallion in her own words. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, girl, just admit, you know, y'all was being petty towards each other. However, she does say... She felt like she should have been speaking up for her when all that stuff happened, what was going on. And she was just sitting there quiet, letting the media bash her, letting Tori bash her, let everybody say X, Y, and Z about her. And she's like, Dad, you know, you're my best friend. I don't care what we beefing about, what we mad at each other about. I would have never done that to you. Now, I think, you know, this is where the little contradictory, little hypocrite comes into play because... She might feel like she, because she said it actually, she would have never slept with nobody that she was seeing either. So different scenarios, but same morals and it apply. You feel like you would never not let her get bashed in public and not speak up just because y'all beefing. She feel like she'd have never slept with one of your dudes because you her best friend. So I, you know, I just, it's just a, it's just a, a common point of people care when it's them. You know what I mean? Everyone is selfish naturally until something affects them. And that's where I that's where my issue is with it. You know, I do see where it is a little sad because you actually get to see their genuine connection on camera in their photos and that they truly were friends. But now to see where it is today is like, damn. And in myself too, I've lost friends along my entire life, even up until now. You know, the people that you do want with you or would like to take with you just simply may not go. And so it's just one of those things. Do I think that they should sit and be able to talk about it? I don't know. It depends on where both of them are with it. But I definitely feel like Megan cannot be painting this picture. Like you wanted this girl to be so concerned and just come to your rescue and ignoring the fact that she's hurt about whatever transpired with you and this man. So I feel like that that was a little selfish of her, you know, giving the take of, oh, I got shot. This is what's going on with me. You should be concerned about me. Stop being concerned about what's going on. It shouldn't matter. No, you shouldn't have slept with him. You shouldn't have slept with him. But you did it. You did it. You can't take it back. You said that a lot of things you did while you were going through like this grieving process. And I get it. It affects us differently. So when she talks about like her and Tori, how she just was hanging with people, Tori had lost his mom too. I didn't know that because I don't follow Tori Lanes either. But she said Tori had lost his mom too. And they would talk about it. So it sounds like her and Tori were a trauma bonding situation. And she just happened to end up with her legs in the air, you know. That's how it goes sometimes. And then this is what came about. She said that she was, you know, hurting his feelings in the truck. She felt like his little ego was being broken. And that's why he was going off. And it was just crazy. She, but she don't really remember what happened that night. Everything was a blur. Everything, um, her mind went blank. She don't really know. So it's like, well, if you're saying you don't really know what caused it, what happened, and all this other stuff, then what else aren't you unsure about? So I would never say this. I would never tell somebody that they aren't a victim or what didn't happen to them happened to them. But it's definitely a little fishy now because 
all the evidence that they used to convict him has now, according to allegedly, has disappeared. You know, so I just feel like it was just a big mess. I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned in there. She was only like 23, 24, whatever at the time. So I understand, you know, being young, dumb, and full of cup. And just making mistakes, because I believe we all have made them. She's about to be 30, you know. And so hopefully she can just look back on this moment when she gets, you know, more wiser and further on and say, dang, I had to take some accountability that my friend did feel away because she did just learn that I slept with her dude. So it's, it's just one of those things. Now, don't get me wrong. You got some friends out here who are okay with their friends or, and best friends sleeping with their new. I know several. However, what floats for you, don't float for the next person. I couldn't be your friend and you just slept with my man. Like, my best friend, I feel like best friends have a whole other title. That's like a sisterhood. That's like more like family. So I can't say you are my sister and you slept with my man or somebody I was seeing. No. Both of y'all got to go at this point. I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to forgive him. But we can't be, we can't be friends no more. But some people do it. You know what I mean? You know, a lot of people do it. I know when I was growing up and I found out that some people did it and they were friends and still friends to this day, it used to shock me. But I was like, hey, you know, I just think that sometimes the company you keep speaks to who you are. And um, I don't know. I definitely feel like Megan needs to take more accountability when it comes to the friendship portion with her and Kelsey. I think it was a situation that went out of line. They, they, all of them were dragging each other online. And I feel like that that is probably why she went forward. Because she was saying that she didn't want to say, well, you know, what happened to her right away. Because she was afraid for him. Because a lot of things have been going on with, you know, police brutality, police unaliving people. And she didn't want that night to go bad. And, um, you know, so I, I get that too. But she said when they came to her with the x-rays and showed her... Like, no, you didn't step your foot on glass. You have um, bullet fragments in your foot. She came out and said what happened. But it sounds like she came out and said what it was because Tori was was poking at her online. Y'all rem remember that? And then the documentary ends. She shows you her going to court. And then it ends with her talking about um, how she, you know, she went to a retreat for a month. She finally had a breakdown where she went away for a month. Then she came back. She's come back fully rejuvenated. And now she's in the era of she don't give a F. She don't care what you think about her. She don't care what you guys say. She going to do what she want to do her way. Excuse me. Her way only. She doesn't care. And she's like a snake. She shut it off all that old skin. She shut it off the past. And now this is what she want to get. You can hate it or love it, and she don't care. And then it ends. I don't like that. The ending was trash. Um, the whole docu, the whole documentary. If I have to give it a ten out of a ten, if I have to go ten, you know, give it one through ten, it definitely gets a three for me. Um, and then if somebody say really, then I'll give you a four. But the reason why um, I love the fact that I learned something about her, I got to see her um with her mother and playing on the piano and just all the moments how her mom was her best friend and you know she would twerk with her mother and she was saying she feel she always feel weird cursing in front of her mother but her mother became her manager and um it was like all right you're gonna do this and she was just saying how her mother believed in her so I definitely I like that part I, I could connect to some things because I lost somebody near and dear to me too so I definitely can understand the being confused, not wanting to deal with what happened and then finally having that moment where it's like, holy crap, I just lost my mother. I just lost whatever. And you have a breakdown. And she did. And that's what happened with her. And um, when she finally realized it, and I, believe, and I believe it, you know, I've been there myself. So, you know, if you guys saw the <sighs> Megan Thee Stallion in her words, you know, a documentary, put it down in the comments. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you think it should have been more. Do you think that what could have been changed in it? But I love the fact that she lets you see the beginning of her story. I'm glad that I know the beginning of her story. I, but it still seemed a little um, 
forced to me. You know, a little, a little, uh, I don't know. I, I, I can't. It, there was a disconnect in there a little bit for me, to me, anyway. But, you know, pretty girl. I really didn't see that, couldn't really see how pretty she was. You actually see she was a little heavier in the documentary um, versus her where she is now. But I'm definitely, you know, I, I wish her nothing but the best. I hope she gets everything that she wanted. She started this journey out with her mother, having her mother who was her her go-to, who was her manager. And she lost her along the way. And, you know, she just said she lost herself. She she lost herself. And death affects everybody differently. So let me know what you guys think. I don't really got too much really to say about it. I feel like she could have kept it. But I definitely feel like this should have came out right after he was found guilty. I think would have had more of an impact. I think people probably would have been, you know, able to be like, oh, okay, and talk more about it. But it kind of feels like, oh, I need to put out a project. I need to be relevant. Um, let me hurry up and put this out and get it out because we've been working on it. Because she's been recording for years. So it, it just was like, I don't think this was the right time. I feel I don't feel like this was the right time. But who the hell am I, you know? So, um, we'll see. I'm interested to see your thoughts. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel. And on Wednesday, catch me on TikTok. If you want to have one-on-one -on -one conversation, join Candy Coda Secrets Facebook group. Until then, drop me a dollar if you holler. <laughs> and tell me your thoughts about the documentary. Because it was okay. It wasn't all of that. She could have kept it. See you later.